At its essence, racing is very simply a fight against time. How fast can you reach a goal? How much can you accomplish while a clock ticks away? Kurt Busch has proven virtually everything he could on a NASCAR track. Kurt Busch is the 2004 NASCAR Cup Series champion. But that was never going to stop him from searching for the most difficult racing challenge he could find. It's called the double. And it's a daring test only a racer could think of. A shot at the Indianapolis 500 to start the day. And then stock car racing's longest event, the Coca-Cola 600, to finish it. Two cities, two races, and the most punishing, complex, and original fight against time there is. Kurt Busch will never forget it. Kurt Busch has never raced an IndyCar. And less than a week before the Indianapolis 500, he's gotten a reminder of how much he still has to learn. Oh, crash, crash. Turn two. Kurt Busch made contact with the wall. Boy, that was a hit. And in a stock car, sometimes you go, am I there yet? In an IndyCar, it hits so fast. It's just a mistake. The downside to that is the car's destroyed. A lot of work for those guys back at the shop now where they could have had two days where they were just rubbing polish on the car. Instead, the accident means that Bush will drive one of teammate Marco Andretti's backup cars and that the team has just 72 hours to prep the car for his next chance on the track. If you think about it too much, this place will intimidate you. Otherwise, just know to show it respect. It'll give it back to you. And my job today really is just to kind of get settled back into the Indy car. I have to learn from that lesson. I have to learn what I did wrong. That's how you improve in life, is you learn from your mistakes. Stand by. Green flag, green flag. Everybody's coming out for this. I almost ignored the fact that it was a different car. I needed to get back on my horse personally, mentally, to be ready when they dropped the green flag. Dash one, dash one. Car on the bottom. All clear, all clear. Splendid conservative. After the Friday night flight to Charlotte, Bush spends Saturday in a more familiar ride, taking one last chance to prep for the second part of the double. It was important, obviously, to be there Saturday at the last practice. Kurt Busch wanting to finish his touches on the 41 before he heads for Indianapolis. Of course, it's got a little bit too much rear split, but might be all right. 10 more. Uh, the rear spring split to me, I think we need to leave it. Yep. And I think that we can help ourselves with air pressure to be able to go from day to nighttime with it as well. Yeah. Well, here we go. Yeah, 1,100 man. miles. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like a spring chicken when I get back. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> At sure. 500, nah, it's easy. He's decided to test himself tomorrow for a range of reasons, all ultimately rooted in an unquenchable competitive spirit. This is by far the biggest challenge that I've ever jumped into. There's the thrill, the excitement of something new. I took the time to digest it and also up my game and be as prepared as I could be for this adventure. There's only one driver 
who's ever successfully completed all 1,100 miles of the Indy Charlotte Double. Bush's mentor and boss, Tony Stewart. You gotta be proactive and be paying, paying attention. Well, it'll be different, but the good thing, just embrace it and have fun with it, because it's, it's a cool deal there. It's different enough to be refreshing, but at the same time, I'm that rookie to not know what to expect. It'll be, you'll like it, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a blast, it makes me jealous. <laughs> Speed on the track won't be enough to get Kurt through race day. He's employing a state-of-the-art experimental plane that offers a faster ride than any other civilian aircraft, a top speed of more than 700 miles per hour. So it's part of November 1, Julia Mike, 4,500 climbing, 7,000 left turn to 330. When he arrives at the brickyard just after dusk, his support network is waiting on the ground. Long days, lots of fun. It's time now, though. 1,100 miles. A challenge that few others have tried. A challenge like none other in racing awaits tomorrow. One year ago, Kurt Busch drove an IndyCar for the first time in his life. It was a natural fit. I'm just kidding a candy store. To have a chance to drive a car here at Indy in the month of May, I, I have to pinch myself. There's the thrill, the excitement of something new, but you don't just jump into the Indy 500. So Busch has spent the last 12 months running through every facet of the decision to race in Indy, stealing his commitment for what awaits. In March, Bush was offered a ride with Andretti Autosport, one of the series' top teams, setting the NASCAR star up for speeds he's never raced at before. And I think Cole's gonna be around 2.30 this year, so. I had 227 in my head, so I'm glad he's thinking higher. Then right. you're talking to me about 2.40? To a driver, you can't tell you you're going 2.20 or 2.30 or 2.40. I just love how you're not afraid to pepper anybody. When he slid the contract over to me, that's when I knew there was no turning back. The announcement came with pageantry, but Bush knew the work was only starting. He'd first have to prove himself to IndyCar officials in a mandatory rookie test session. Bush quickly got the 26 car up to speed. Give me like four more laps like this, please. There'll be new tires when we come back out. Should I do anything to adjust the balance to try and help that understeer? What do you think of the rear? No, that balance change, the, that rear wing change there, just started to help the car breathe better and feel the track better. Her girlfriend, Patricia Driscoll, 230 miles an hour up close, was as daunting as she might have feared. It's not that Patricia was against it, but she didn't get hit with the moment of this is gonna happen until that unveiling, and my name was on the car. Then she realized, wow, there's no roll cage. These cars are going 230, and I had to calm her down. It's scary, now real. Yes, reality is in. Now, it's all about that, that center wing. Mm -hmm. The more downforce you keep in it, the more stable the car is. Just a little bit safer? Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's how this world works. This is if you're knocked out, they can put air into here and lift the helmet off your head and not encourage any spinal injuries. So let's not use that component. Because you're used to seeing them in the NASCAR. Yeah. You know, but to go this fast is incredible. It is. Yeah. It's scary. You know, she doesn't like Daytona and Talladega just because of the wrecks that can happen at those tracks. But as a racer, you never think about the side effects of if you wreck and what's going to happen. It's been a preparation that's enveloped nearly every part of his life, including, back in his adopted Maryland hometown, countless training sessions to perfect his fitness and focus for the double. What's going on? Hey, what's up? Good, Good to see you. Hey, hey, how, how you doing, doing, sir? Thanks All for right. getting in. Let's get after it. You ready? We're gonna get after it today. Head on the ceiling. Six. Uh huh. 
Seven. <laughs> yep. Eight. Yeah, find it. Nine. Good. Stanley Crump has worked with different athletes in the Baltimore area. Well, I know it hurts. Not supposed to feel good. Hard work's not easy. Stanley's workouts more were to build your core up and to build efficient muscle that will be able to handle whatever rigors come my way, whether it's the steering, whether it's the fatigue of the G-forces, whatever it may have been, it's just trying to build a leaner piece. I don't like that one. All right, good. We're gonna hit back to those battle ropes. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes. A lot of the exercises, I'll try to visualize that I'm in the car. You can see uh, when he gives me the hand clamp to uh, strengthen my hands that I'll sit in an indie car position and I'll mentally focus like I'm in the car and I'll try to visualize laps while I'm compressing. You've been riding all day, your stress level is high, fans are cheering, your car is not acting right, and somehow you gotta make sense out of all of it. That's it. Good job, man. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, of course, that's it. For months now, Patricia has contemplated every detail and every possible hurdle. Okay. She's made the double her challenge as much as his. Going, moving on to the 18th. Mm -hmm. We're taking your plane. Yes. So we need to leave no later than seven to get there at 8.30, eight. Yeah, everything's that magical two hour window. Okay. It takes two hours to make anything happen when you're dropping so you want to leave at to seven next. to get there an hour before? Everything yes, that's gone on the last four or seven. five months, Patricia's really spearheaded the logistics side of golf cart rides, chopper rides, plane rides. It's amazing to see it all come together. So no matter when the race ends for You're, us, so 500 miles, moving. we're just going straight to the chopper. Straight to the chopper, chopper Got to, to the, get to the chopper. To the airplane. I knew I could get that in there. <sighs> I've got just that. enough of an outline to keep track of where I need to be. There. That way I'm not caught off guard but I'm just glad Patricia's got most of the uh, busy work done for me. Well, thank you, sweetie, for following my lead on everything that I've put together. <laughs> Kurt Busch's schedule for the double is firmly in place, and the green flag at the brickyard is drawing ever closer. As the month of May dawned, Kurt Busch and Patricia Driscoll arrived in Indianapolis to tackle perhaps the most grueling stretch of the driver's career. If it felt like they'd been preparing for the double forever, they knew what was in store would only be more demanding. Do you still have your strawberries? Still have my strawberries. I'm making you eat them. I will have some. Are you making shortcake or something? It's not on the the menu plan, yeah. the nutrition plan for this week. Just berries. Just berries. Bush needed all the time he could get to acclimate himself to his IndyCar. He brought his biggest asset, confidence, into the cockpit. But when he settled in, so much about the machine was unfamiliar, and there's only one way to get a real feel. Each lap around the brick yard was an education. Other corners of the track offered reminders he's an outsider. Cab driver! That was the best heckle I've ever had. Cab driver. <laughs> Qualifying wasn't just a task fraught with tension. It was also part of a day-long logistical test for the double. Drivers get multiple attempts at the four-lap time trial, but with his packed schedule, Bush was eager to get the job done in one shot. All right, let's hear it for Kurt Bush as he hopes to qualify for the first time at Indianapolis. His first run was somewhat of a disappointment. I should have 
compensated more on the chassis. A little bit more understeer. When you do something for your first time, you know you're not getting everything out of it, and yet you have to teach yourself what you left out on the track. I didn't have a neutral feeling down there, but maybe I was just nervous and uh, the whole moment I didn't free it up enough. Yeah. So is that your uh, one and done? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. I think you're gonna hold up pretty good though. 229. I don't know. In Charlotte, the day was a dry run for the double for Kurt's NASCAR team as well, as they prepped for the evening's all-star race. I'm interested to see what he, how he does going from those type of cars to these cars. Back in Indy, Bush and his team resolved to make one more qualifying run. James had the most understeer yet, you know, had a really fast run. So they're being pretty Aggressive. Aggressive with it, particularly the last couple laps. They're really, really chasing it. It's turning in a little bit too quickly, or finding the white line too fast, and then I ease off. So that's not the car, that's no, you. It's uh, me. Stock car detoxification program. <laughs> yeah. We made an old school change. We just freed the car up. We just put more of an oversteer feel in the car, got the car back in line, and went again. You got it all out of your time is it right now? now? 150. You're fine. So the second and what will be final attempt today at qualification for Kurt Busch. Remember the car's going to be a little more neutral. Stay on top of it with the balance. Adjust your tools as you need. Coming to the green flag. Kurt Busch, green flag. Go fast time. Here we go. I was happy with 12. I was ready to go. I think we should have just left it there. It's going 230 miles an hour is a little bit nerve wracking for me right now. I know he has more in him though, so we couldn't leave. Lap one complete. 230.388. He's the fastest so far today. Kurt Busch is flying. Oh my God. eyes are this big when you're out there driving at 2.30. That was the feel that I was looking for on qualifying day. Kurt Busch, checkered flag waving. P3, P3, excellent job, well done. That was worth staying. He knew he had it in him. He did. And he did. <laughs> awesome job, Kurt, awesome job. You're a car driver now. It was something special. I mean, it, as a racer, you're always looking for more, but at the same time, I'm in foreign territory. Yeah. Fastest yeah. rookie, that was goal yeah. number one. Yeah. Job, now we're going to be Thank you. Job, top man. rookie next weekend. Right. Bush's time ultimately slotted into 12th on the final qualifying grid. But the effort had still exceeded his own expectations. Back on the job in Charlotte, Bush's NASCAR peers were all very impressed. Did up there. Hey, man. What's up, bro? Good job. Almost. So awesome. Almost, man. <laughs> Just telling your brain to go down in there and hold it wide open, that was hard. And then once I got that done, then you don't know you're going 220. Yeah. Going into one? Yeah. It's a blast, man. Yeah. It's fun, man. It's, it's really a rush. Thank you. I appreciate all the support. Green flag goes in the air, and they set sail for turn number one. Getting back so quickly in the stock car was an adjustment. But there was also continued proof of what's driven him to tackle the double in the first place, his racing instincts, and his desire to compete. Jamie McMurray wins the Sprint All-Star Race. Thanks again for all the hard work and allowing me to go back and forth. Time for man. A solid 11th place finish in the all-star race capped off a successful dry run at the double. But Kurt Busch knew how much work was still ahead. Of the 33 drivers racing in Indy, 
there were six rookies. And Kurt Busch had no trouble fitting in. I've driven a NASCAR car for years. We, we don't get aggressive with it. We have to be smooth. We have to be in that rhythm. Here it's much more aggressive. Yeah, right? the, yeah the rhythm. That's always the yeah, You're right. The practice to follow was one of the last before race day. I was trying to get a lot of corner speed generated and get runs on guys. I left the car in too neutral of a position and I didn't compensate when I got distance between me and the car in front of me to tighten the car back up. The car steps out in turn two and I overcompensated with the wheel. It just took off straight towards the wall. The crash left Bush's team with a significant hill to climb less than a week before the race. Hardly ideal in any circumstance, least of all with a rookie driver. But Bush quickly had to shift his focus, heading straight from Indy to New York City with teammate Marco Andretti for a whirlwind media tour, where he discovered word of the wreck had traveled ahead of him. Crashed yesterday. It's uh, it's part of auto racing. It's the the chance to go up against the edge, and I slipped over it, and accidents happen. How are you feeling after oh. yesterday's crash? You Everything's good? good. That's good. I'm glad. I hope you Thanks. win the Indy 500. There's guys that have wrecked, or there's guys that haven't wrecked and will wreck. Unfortunately, it's part of being a rookie, and it's unfortunate. You know, I made a, a rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Solid lesson learned. Um, Don't do that again. Better do. Crash yesterday. No. Yeah, I know. It's, fine. it's all part of the going down in a ball of flames type mentality. Yeah, why did you have to crash like the day before we come to New York? It's just to show the IndyCar guys it's tough. I was it's my decoy move. Yeah, that was all for publicity. Yeah, it's to go through oh, he's, really, he's a pushover. You really wanted Marco's backup car? He's a pushover. Knowing what a grind the week before race day would be didn't make it any less tiring. All of this was, in many ways, as much a part of the difficulty of the double as the two races themselves. And next up was a stop in Charlotte for NASCAR qualifying. And here is Kurt Busch. He'll start 12th at Indianapolis on Sunday. Where will he start here Sunday evening? The answer was a disappointing 28th. Just another challenge to cope with in the double. There was no time to dwell on it. With the schedule taking him back to Indy for Friday's carb day, the last practice before the race. Spotters were done. Spotters were done. Bush has put his faith in his girlfriend's program, but points of contention still remain. Starting tomorrow, the serious diet begins. This is your last day. Knock yourself out. Let's see how you do. What do you mean, how I do? Is it going to change my mood? Am I going to become grumpier? Careful what kind of show you're trying <laughs> to direct. I'm going to help with your nutrition. I'm going to screw up your balance. I'm not doubting your system. Don't doubt. I won't. <laughs> wow. Is this scary or what? Do the Pantene moment. Do the Pantene moment? Yeah. Oh, Boom. My oh, oh, oh. <laughs> a rare bit of downtime after lunch gives Patricia a chance to get in a two-seat IndyCar, perhaps to ease her mind about what her boyfriend will experience on Sunday. Coming onto the straightaway, mid straightaway, and they're on it. Nice smooth arc, consistent all the way through, not scrubbing any speed. Think? That was awesome. <laughs> it blows my mind how fast you're going out there. I would say wow. it's like 2.06, 0.394. So we're still not there. So we're still not you're, at, at you're in the 30. 200. You're in the 200 <laughs> club. 
That was amazing. The team that's adopted Bush for the race, Andretti Autosport, has built itself into one of the best on the IndyCar circuit, with two victories in the 500 over the past decade. And while focus in the shop is usually on building race cars, Saturday it's transformed into something quite different. Less than 18 hours before the green flag drops, the team's traditional pre-race party goes full throttle. Didn't think a race shop could turn into something like this. I know, I was there earlier. Which leaves Bush far from his comfort zone. We don't normally do appearances Saturday night before a race. Yeah, yeah, we go out clubbing, yeah. you know. Kind of takes, uh, takes all the edge that you feel off yeah. the next morning. And attempting racing's greatest feat, doing the double, Kurt Busch. And our host tonight, fake coffee? the man behind it all, Andretti Autosports team owner, Michael Andretti. Thank you. Thank you all. Wow, this is, uh, this is a great turnout. Uh, you know, we're here to have some fun tonight and then uh, hopefully uh, celebrate uh, a win tomorrow. So, yeah! uh, thank you again. And, uh, Months, weeks, and days of preparation are all but complete. All that's left for Kurt Busch and Indy is some rest, and then tomorrow's double. Long days, lots of fun. It's time now, though. 1,100 miles. After all the anticipation, all the preparation, the day is finally here. Kurt Busch attempting the most difficult challenge in all of racing. Two tracks, two cars, two races, 1,100 miles in one day. What's going on out here? Hey, Mom. Good morning. Good morning, sweetie. How are you? See you. Oh, smell like coffee. <laughs> you got a long day. That'll be all right. <laughs> One race at a time. Yeah, there you go. Situation at a time. Hopefully, it's nice and smooth and we're yeah. on schedule. We're not getting out of here early or anything stupid. You know, <laughs> got to make the full 500 miles. There you go. Good. You know, the day of, I tried to keep it normal, but it's the Indy 500. Kurt, it's an honor to be here. And we offer this mass for your safety and for your success. It's gonna be fine. He's gonna do great. He's gonna do great. He yeah. knows what he's doing. He's gonna be excited, right? Peace be with you. Day, can you sum up the emotions and the nerves that you're feeling today? Well, it's a moment that I had felt when I first came into NASCAR and being a rookie and experiencing something new. The walk through Gasoline Alley, it hit me of all the legends that have raced here and that have done this walk on a Sunday morning of the Indy 500. And so it hits you in many ways. It was very uh, special. The people and the atmosphere were so electric. You from Indiana or no? Um, I'm from Pittsburgh, but I went to school in Indiana. All right, so, right on. So You're a Hoosier, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Cool. This is amazing. And this, it's like a big backyard party. Unbelievable. Have a good one, mate. Thanks, you too, man. Hey, best of luck. Hey, yeah, man. Thanks Joe's so point that we go out there, it's insane. Yeah. You walk up up steps, you stand on the platform, and then Take you walk picture. down, and then line up on the first row. 
it's just a chance to, to live a dream. All right, let's hear it for Kurt Busch. I'm not sure what's next, but it's about that time. Attention on the grid. Drivers to your cars. Back home again in Indiana. And it seems that I can see. And here. one of the grandest spectacles in all of sports. And the electricity is enough to inspire awe, even in a NASCAR superstar. You know the way I absorb the, the start of the race? It's as if it's a formal percussion of history and tradition. This most certainly is a magical moment in motorsports. Fans are on their feet. The whole parade lap, the energy, you come down the straightaway, fans on both sides. It's, uh, it's an amazing feeling to be on the asphalt grabbing gears and going up to speed. The green flag is out. Green, green, green. Was in my comfort zone taking the green and then feeling the air and just kind of playing it patient, dropping back a little bit. Kurt Busch is running in 15th position. He started 12th. Kurt Busch has lost three positions since the drop of the green flag. I anticipated more excitement as far as cars getting side by side and possibly having trouble early on. I wanted to not have my race end too short. The 26 car of Kurt Busch, of course, he's just a little over 50 miles into that 1100 mile journey that he has today. Right now, that car not to his liking. As the race settles in, Bush's conservative approach may put the 26 car in danger of being left behind. But over a 500 mile race where so much can happen, the strategy also might just pay off. In Charlotte, the NASCAR world is getting primed for tonight, the longest race of the season. But for now, all eyes are on Indianapolis, and all hopes are with Kurt Busch. Once I realized we were halfway through our first stint, I'm like, this thing's gonna probably go green a long time. And at that moment, you go through what you've learned so far, and then now what do I need to do to keep pace? Busch's first IndyCar pit stop comes on lap 30. His confidence is beginning to grow, and he's shedding his conservative approach accordingly. We're halfway now, Kurt, halfway. As the race unfolded, you know, they kept telling me we were moving up. Getting the buttons on that lap. Kurt Busch moving up, smartly. Some of these guys get a different attitude as the lap wind down to where they are now. Oh, crash! Got Dixon. Spinning, and that's purple. Can't do this! Carpenter fired up at James Hedgecliffe. The ugly day of crashes is so far sparing Bush, who's moved up to the top 10, courtesy in large part of his respect for one of the Brickyard's signature hazards. Turn two was flat out the hardest corner, and it was due to the wind angle coming over those suites. It was just a dry spot of air. It was as if you were turning just fine, and then the front end would take off. Big crash, turn two. That's Townsend, Townsend Bell. My first instinct was get as far left as possible. It takes so very little to cut a tire. You have to dodge all that shrapnel, and if that would have cut our tire, day would have been done. Still, when cleanup halts the race, concerns immediately arise about how it might affect Bush's precise schedule. It's only 3 o'clock. It's only 3 o'clock. I 
think they'll uh, be able to get this mess cleaned up in a hurry so we can go back to it. The engines will be refired. They're on board and ready to go. Green, 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 green flag. Green flag flies. We're back racing at Indianapolis. This is a shootout. Ryan Hunter Ray. That's right into Hardy. Almost got into the grass to make the pass. Ryan Hunter Ray with a bad time move in the entrance to three. I had a, a front row seat for it. At the same time, those are good positions to be in sometimes if you can't quite hang with them to if they do have a problem, you now you got to dodge a shrapnel again. White flag, white flag. Kurt, bring it home. Check her flag, check her flag. Here comes Castro Nevis. He won't get there. Bush's teammate Ryan Hunter Ray takes the checkered flag with Bush not far behind. Good job, Kurt. Good job, Kurt. Fantastic. The sixth place finish will earn him Indy 500 Rookie of the Year honors. In his first ever IndyCar event, it feels like a victory. It hasn't quite hit me yet, but it was a special feeling to know that uh, I did my part as a driver. I felt like I had to deliver with all the hard work that they've put in. But there's no more time to celebrate. The next race, the one to Charlotte, is on. Time to go. Let's keep everything together. Sorry. Uh, when I got out of the car, it just was a, a mad rush of cameras and people. We're walking this and we're following this tall guy right here. Is there any way to congratulate Ryan Hunter Ray? Right? See, you will be in the car lane right now. And I'm taking you to the garage. 500 down, 600 to go. Hey, you gotta go. Gotta go. Thank you. Should have taken more time to, to soak in Indy and its finish. Oh, man. But yet, didn't want any snags or any hiccups. It was time to go down to Charlotte. You got time to spare here. Got to get to the chopper. Excuse us. Turn two. This corner over here. I could never get it right. Right where those sweets are. Right. Right where those sweets are. Right. But six. Are you proud? Yeah, I'm very happy. I can't believe it. Sixth place, honey. I know. I was watching. Are you excited? Represent. Yes. Do I get a real kiss now? I am so proud of you. Good. Are you hungry? Yeah, we need to, to eat. We'll get the IVs. It'll take Kurt Busch less than an hour to fly from Indianapolis to Charlotte. And on board, every second will be utilized. I had uh, wet wipes to take a shower with and went and wiped down, tried to dry off and just feel fresh again. He has no time to let his body recover naturally from three hours in his Indy car. So an onboard nurse administers an IV to replenish fluids and nutrients for the 600 miles still ahead. Too cold, so you start shivering. Yeah. I don't like it, won't help. For about 20 minutes, um, I had my hat over my head on the plane, and you know, you got the, the IVs going in. There was no way I was going to be able to zone out. So it was just nice, though, to just relax and absorb and feel the energy of that sixth place finish, but also just try to 
ease it off to the side. We'll enjoy it the next day because I have 600 miles. I have the longest race in NASCAR coming up. I'm so proud of you. Oh, you did a fantastic job. Thank you. When we landed, the crowd roared, and you know, it was a, a moment for their NASCAR driver to go up to Indy and, and post a good result. They were proud. It was great to have the next uh, 15 minutes, what it felt like to sit on the bench for driver intros and just kind of just take it easy and you know get uh, get my thoughts and mind collected around 600 miles. Good job, man. How like how was it? It's a thrill of a lifetime. Unbelievable. Job, man. Thanks, man. Everybody was impressed. Stagger. The biggest thing was lift on the straightaway and then hold it wide open through the corner to use the stagger to help it turn. Tony thought I could do it all along, which I didn't think that I could. Good thing you got a base on it. I just stayed to the bottom. Next stayed year, to the bottom. Year, Maybe. Yeah. Go to the car, a few photos by the car with the military we were honoring. Trying to make sure there was no mistakes made because of the attention that I had my mind on all day. Might be a bit tight to start with all that traffic. Yeah. Don't want to be loose to start, you know, so. No, what, what I just did for 500 miles, we have to yeah. remember that. Yeah. So we'll be fine. Yep, yeah. we'll see how it goes. It's a very patriotic pre-race. It's always been about a time to reflect. Uh, the guys that I've helped in the, the physical therapy room, uh, the guys that I've seen with PTSD. On my bad days, when I think that I'm overwhelmed with this whole adventure, I'm going to think of them. Two times in one day, I don't know if I can handle that. Sorry. Really appreciate everybody's support in doing this double. My job starts all over again, 600 miles. Stay with me, stay focused, stay on it. Let's race them at the end. 10 4, man. Have a good night. Green flag drops on the 55th running of the Coca Cola 600. Green, green, green. All rolling, all rolling here. I settled in right away. I felt good when they dropped the green and first few laps of just feel it out, make sure I know what's what, and get after it. He had to start at the back, and he has jumped nine positions in that number 41. Fire pressures are really low every time we start out. Or I just drove an Indy car all day. We know for sure you drove an Indy car. I was going to muscle that thing home. I was going to put my feet through the floorboard. And he's really worked hard on this car. It's got better and better. He's gotten a position to have another top 10 finish. With his stock car feeling more and more familiar, Bush begins closing in on the top 10. But as he well knows, in racing, a setback is only an instant away. I could just drop the cylinder. That sounds like It's only a matter of time before she lets go. There you go. Kurt Busch looks like his car gives up the ghost. 194 miles shy of his goal, Kurt Busch's marathon day has abruptly ended. I really didn't want to go out that way. But those things happen in motorsports. She's all done. Well, hell of a run to it lasted, bud. Putting a value on success can come from all different angles. I'm very satisfied with how it all turned out and I loved every minute of it. It's a tough way for it to end here. You can't let it dampen the mood from what happened up in Indianapolis. Really a fantastic day, all in all, all the way through. It was a fight against time that Kurt Busch couldn't resist trying. An epic test he needed to try. In two cities hundreds of miles apart, on two tracks, in two kinds of cars, 
in two races. Kurt Busch revealed just what kind of driver and competitor he is. On this day, no one else drove further and no one else reached higher. He may not have made it to the final finish line, but racing, competing, testing himself was all it was ever really about.